Hi everyone, Grover from Odyssey here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Embody Immerse Virtual Studio plugin. Now Immerse Virtual Studio is Embody's latest effort, but we've also worked with them previously on Reveal Plus, so definitely check out the description box. Now if you haven't seen it, the Avid live stream on the new Carbon interface also talks about Embody's Immerse Virtual Studio because it's part of the premium plugin pack. So what's very cool about this plugin is it allows you to sit in one of several high quality and very famous mixing and mastering studios. There's a lot of plugins though on the market that claim to be able to do that. And I found that the reality is most of them don't sound very good. So what does Immerse Virtual Studio do that makes it different? Well, it takes the headphones that you're using, in this case, Odyssey LCD 2Cs for this video, but you can use any of our headphones from our entire lineup and it compensates all of those headphones, no matter which one you're using, to the same target frequency response curve. And because they know what headphones you're using, they can compensate it appropriately to the same frequency response. Then they take a picture of your ear, which you submit to Embody's server. It's analyzed by an AI that they've developed, and it creates a personalized HRTF for you. Now this is quite cool technology because typically getting an HRTF requires visiting a facility that has very specialized equipment and it costs quite a bit of money. With Immerse Virtual Studio, you can simply take a picture of your ear, upload it to the Embody server, and you have an HRTF. Now what that HRTF does that's really important is compensates for the specific frequency response of your ear and puts you in those studios. So we've handled the headphones, we've handled the ear, and we've also now handled the mixing and mastering room that you want to be sitting in. Most Virtual Studio plugins on the market don't do this. They don't account for the personalized HRTF. And if they do account for an HRTF, it's generally a generic one, which doesn't work for everyone's ears because, well, everyone's ears are different. So the Immerse Virtual Studio is very, very comprehensive, and it's essentially the uh, technologically correct and accurate, albeit much more uh, technology-intensive way of implementing this. So before I talk your ears off, let's dive in and take a look at the Immerse Virtual Studio plugin. When you first start up Immerse Virtual Studio, you'll see a screen that looks a little bit like this. Now you'll be prompted, of course, before this to take a picture of your ear if you have not already, submit it to the Embody server, and they'll then create your own personalized HRTF. I've already done that, of course, you can see my profile is right here. So let's get started and take a look at it, some of the cool features. Now once you've put your HRTF in, got it scanned in the Embody server, you can select a headphone. There's a wide variety to choose from. Obviously we're using Odyssey, and since I'm using the LCD2 closeback today, that's the headphone I'm going to pick. Eventually there will even be a link to the Odyssey store from here, so if you'd like to purchase a pair of Odyssey headphones directly from the plugin, you can do that. Now, over on the left-hand side here, much like Reveal Plus, if you're familiar with that, you can select between a variety of different studios. There's a couple more studio models available here than there were in Reveal Plus. So obviously we still have the Spitfire Studio that's Warren Hart from Produce Like a Pro, uh, Music Friends Studio, which I believe is Carlos de la Garza's studio. Um, also the SAE Expression College's control room, as well as two rooms from the Echo Bar Studio in North Hollywood. In the middle here, you've got all of the controls for the plugin. So you can select between the different speakers, which you can also do in the graphic interface as well. And you can control the amount of ambience you wanna have, as well as defeat that, and the master gain control. Over here on the right side is a level control with a peak that hits about zero dB right there at the top. Embody has also included a limiter, just in case you happen to have really, really hot levels on your mix or want to have this in a place in the chain where it might uh, potentially clip the plugin. Personally, I don't use it, but if you need it, it is there for you to use. You can also, of course, bypass the limiter. Over here, we've got a couple of other controls. So the clarity one is quite interesting, and I really like it. It seems to add a kind of openness to the mid-range and treble. It kind of takes the room a little bit out of the equation, but gives me a little extra insight and a little extra sort of forensic detail uh, in the essential mid-range and critical treble frequencies. I like to have the clarity setting at about three, um, and that's where I like it to live. You can also, of course, turn it off. I like having just a little bit of it. It um, adds a little of that extra immediacy and presence that you get when you're hearing a mix really close and upfront. Um, so that's a very, very useful control. A left-right balance control, obviously, if you want to check panning, mono, things like that. 
These buttons down here are essentially functional utilities. If you want to hear, for example, minimum phase response, which allows you to use the plugin with much lower latency in a tracking or recording environment. So if I were using this doing fine uh, time alignment edits or um, recording actively, I might choose to use the minimum phase response. Otherwise, the plugin defaults to a linear phase response, which I find has a little bit tighter bass, a little bit more detail, and is a little bit cleaner, especially as regards the sound stage and presentation of you know, spatial uh, elements of a mix. Let's take a look now at the available studio. So obviously we have Echo Bar, and one of the cool things about Immerse Virtual Studio is that it gives you a little bit of extra information over here on the right-hand side. So you can see Echo Bar, of course, is in North Hollywood. It tells me a little bit about the um, people who have recorded there, Michael Jackson, Earth, Wind & Fire, Snoop Dogg, folks like that even gives links to the website for Echo Bar, as well as a link to a Spotify playlist that they use, their Instagram. Over here on the second page, we get a little bit of a look at the gear that they use in the studio. So of course we can see they've got a Shadow Hills mastering compressor, they've got Focal Trio speakers, they've got some other cool Neve gear, things like that. This tells me a little bit about those. And for the gearheads here, you know, it'll drop some names of, you know, different outboard gear or speakers that they use. This might be fun to learn a little bit more about the room and about the kind of gear that they use. So that's the gear and equipment side of things. Over on the third page then, we also have some information about the people who work here. So Eric Rikers in this case. If we go over to Echo Bar Studio B, we have a little bit of information about Bob Horn and who he is. And then if we go over to SAE, we can see that they've actually populated their content with a video. So if we click on that video, it'll take us to a link which will tell us a little bit about the SSL 9000 recording console that they have in their studio. So that's very cool and expect to see all of these studios updated with more information as time goes on. Uh, these studios actually have control of the information that is being presented. It's their Instagrams, it's their videos that they've made, it's their website. So that's a really cool way to uh, get a little more information, a little inside insight on the studios and the people who work in them. For me, being someone who's younger and not necessarily knowing all of uh, the big names that have worked at these studios, but certainly knowing the music that came out of them and living in LA myself and having worked at some of these studios, it was actually quite fun to see who I knew and to be introduced to uh, some of the work and some of the equipment that these folks used. Um, I recognize more of it than I expected to. Now on that same note, um, one of the things about this that is really special is that the people who work in these studios have actually signed off on the curves and the frequency response of the uh, studios themselves. So Embody goes in and they measure all the studios. They run a very exhaustive and very technical measurement suite on all of these rooms. But they're not just getting the sound of the speaker and applying your HRTF and applying your headphone compensation. They're also sitting down with the mix and master engineers and saying, all right, this is what we've come up with. Take a listen to this and see if it sounds right. And then they tweak it and tune it and get feedback and tweak and get feedback and tweak until the people who work in the studios are actually happy with the sound. So if you're listening to the Spitfire studio on the Focal Trios, you can know that Warren Hart has actually signed off on the sound of this saying, yes, this is my room. This is what my room sounds like. And I think that this is um, an accurate representation of that. Bob Horn is actually signed off on Echo Bar Studio B, things like that. So these are not just, uh, you know, plugin coding engineers um, taking a bunch of curves and throwing them into a plugin. This is a very, very thoroughly vetted um, plugin. These are very thoroughly vetted rooms. And the people who actually mix in them have said that uh, they, they believe that this is, you know, an accurate representation of, of how they sound. So that's uh, something to know that I think um, takes this plugin really to a different place than a lot of the virtual studio plugins that I've used before. Normally, um, you hear them and you think, okay, well, there's sort of a murky treble and maybe there's a little too much bass and, you know, things might sound kind of funky and they might sound out of your head, but some of the spatial cues are weird. This plugin, by giving you control over the ambience, over the clarity, and uh, also by working directly with the studio engineers has really done a fine job of crafting great sounding studios. And I actually really like and find this plugin very usable and, and, and to actually have a very clean sound to it. One of my favorite 
uh, setups is probably the Dynaudio uh, BM15As in the uh, control room at the SAE school. I like to set the ambience to about 30 and I like my clarity set to about three. I find that setting sounds really nice. Um, I find the Echo Bar Studio um, Augsburger uh, uh, speakers sound very nice. I set the ambience usually, depending on how much room sound I wanna hear between 20 and 40. Again, I usually have my clarity around three. With these speakers, I like to even boost it a little higher up to a four or a five. That's one that has a lot of clarity to it and, and is very clean sounding, but has extremely linear bass and allows me to um, really get a sense of how the dynamics and punch of a mix are working. Another one that I've mentioned in the past liking is the Focal Trio setup in Warren Hart Studio. Um, again, I like to turn the ambience completely off for that one and to have my clarity setting down around a two or a three. That one seems to have really smooth mid-range and high, uh, high frequencies. The Focals have a really punchy and kind of fun bass, and that gives me a great picture, uh, especially when I'm producing or when I'm trying to get a sense of the music uh, of the mix. It's got just enough contour to the frequency response that it gets me involved and engaged. It's got a slightly musical curve, but it's still accurate enough to let me know what's going on in the mix. The Echo Bar Studio A has really good, again, Focal twin speakers. I really like the sound of the Focal speakers, especially with the ambience control turned quite low down around, say, a, a 15 or a 20. Again, with those, I would probably boost the clarity up to a 5 or a 6, pretty high for that one. So those are a couple of the settings that I like to use. And I'd also like to point out that you're not limited to uh, just one setup you can have multiple engineers using the same plugin. So if you have a uh, HDX or Pro Tools setup of any kind in a studio which has multiple users, you can actually go up here and add additional user profiles. It'll ask you to sign up for the Immerse Virtual Studio with your email, and then ask you to submit a picture of your ear to the Embody server, much like the initial setup. You can have several different profiles available here, and it's quite easy to switch between them by simply clicking on which profile you'd like to use. So I find this an extremely useful tool for uh, people who have shared studios or multiple studios in which you might not be familiar with the monitoring setup, but you can bring your own headphones again, right? A large selection of different Odyssey headphones. Say I've got two C's, say my friend has X's. We can both bring our same headphones in the studio, have them compensated to the same target curve and have the same frequency response, and then switch between our own individual HRTF profiles and whatever setups in the Immerse Virtual Studio plugin we would like to hear. So that's a little bit about the Immerse Virtual Studio plugin. As I mentioned, I find this implementation sounds really, really good. It's much smoother. It doesn't have some of the funky colorations that other ones have, and it doesn't sound messed up in the treble at all. I've really been appreciating the perspective it offers me on my mixes, and they've definitely gone to another level. They're more dynamic. They translate better onto a wider variety of systems, and I'm finding that my tonal balances tend to be a bit more spot on when I'm using the plugin. Um, it also sounds really good. I've just been enjoying listening to it and hearing the sort of spatiality aspect. It really gets the sound more out of my head than other virtual studio plugins that I've tried. Add on to that the fact that there's a lot of virtual studio plugins that simply are not available in AAX and that this will be able to make use of uh, the native processing plugin power on the new Carbon interface and you've got I think a real winner here. So definitely check it out as I mentioned before there's a 14 day free trial and I think that this is a virtual studio plugin that if you're going to have something that helps you monitor especially in the mix at home environments that we're working with so often today this is the one to check out.